Hey guys, Ryan Goodson here again with New Moon Telescopes. Wanted to talk to you today a little bit about our latest offering. This is going to be our plus size telescopes that we're going to be offering very soon. And this size will represent a 26 inch F4. If you look on our website, we'll have a 26 inch F4 or a 26 inch F3.3. So both sizes will be available. It'll kind of depend on the amount of money you, you're comfortable spending or your specifications or your needs as far as your viewing goes, how high on the ladder you're willing to climb. So anyhow, this one right here is actually a 27 inch F3.9. So the dimensions are going to be basically the exact same as our 26 inch F4s. So if you want to go to our website and see more pictures of this particular scope, please do so, www.newmoontelescopes.com. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and start talking a little bit about our bigger telescopes. Now, on this 27-inch F3.9, we have Argo Navis and also ServoCat wired up. Now, as you can see, this is a wireless hand controller for ServoCat, which I would highly recommend as an upgrade should you choose to go with an NMT and should you choose to buy ServoCat with it. I would strongly recommend the wireless controller. You can walk around with this. It makes climbing up on a ladder a lot easier with the controller in your hand, and you can leave your Argo right here on the positioning board. You don't have to worry about carrying it around. As you can see, I like to wrap the Argo Navis cords around our detachable aluminum tube here. And also, if you'll look at this positioning board, underneath you can open this up and there's storage room for your controllers. You could put batteries in there if you wanted to do spare batteries, or even like filters, eyepieces, things like that. So. We offer that on any servo cat powered telescope you choose to do. This is included in the cost. There's not an extra amount for this. So back to talking about this telescope. This particular telescope has got a 27 point flotation mirror cell and it still comes standard with our adjustable edge sling. What we use is we use a wire sling and it's connected to linear bearings. And as you collimate, the linear bearings are able to move up and down and it'll compensate for that mirror going out of plane as you reposition the mirror to align the optics initially whenever you set up. So that's something that we got from uh, Howie Gladder. Uh, he's an inspiration to amateur astronomers everywhere and what he's contributed is amazing. So that type of idea, that adjustable sling, came from Nils Olaf Carlin and uh, Howie Gladder. So that's where we got the inspiration for our design. Um, and we kind of took it from there and kind of made it our own. Now also, as you can see, the servo cat moves extremely easily. It's not extremely loud. Um, you know, these are servo motors that are powering the telescope. And you can see it also moves in the altitude very easily. And we're not talking about a really lightweight scope here. This isn't supposed to be an ultra light or anything like that. It's ultra portable. That's the point of new moon telescopes is ultra portable. Now our smaller telescopes, say 20 inches and under, they are extremely light comparatively speaking to other uh, name brand manufacturers that make custom high-end Dobsonians like we do. Our telescopes will typically be lighter because we use a lower profile mirror box and a low pro profile rocker box. We're able to do that because we increase the size of the bearing and this one we actually went even larger than we typically would for our bearings because we wanted to be able to add a lot of weight up here to the secondary, or excuse me, to the upper cage. Um, we're going to do CCD imaging and uh, some other stuff with this particular telescope. It's kind of going to be the uh, New Moon Telescope's showpiece, the one we take out to star parties. So we want to be able to put about 10 pounds up here without having to worry about counterweights. We were able to achieve this by making the extra large crescent bearings that are now kind of... Uh, ubiquitous with new moon telescopes. Every time you see a new moon telescope, you'll see these black, large crescent bearings. That allows us to put a little bit more weight up on the upper cage without needing counterweights, which is something that we just really don't like to get into if we don't have to, the counterweights. Now, this telescope comes equipped with our collapsible truss system, as do all sizes. So basically, these truss members are all interlocked, okay? They're just one unit. So to set this up, there's a kickstand that'll tilt the telescope down. You just fan out the collapsible truss. You can set it right on here, and then you can put the upper cage on it, no problem. Flat-footed, no crawling up on a ladder or anything like that to assemble it. And being one piece, 
It's a very, very rigid structure. They're connected at four points on the upper cage, four points on the mirror box, and being one piece, it makes it much more portable and much faster to break down and set up. You're not doing one tube at a time and all that. So I think we've discussed that in some of our other YouTube videos. So I won't go too much further into that. So it does have the collapsible truss system. These are one and a quarter inch outside diameter tubing. And as you'll notice, you probably can't see from there, but these are a uh, powder coat, okay? We're powder coating all of our telescopes now. So our telescope tubing will always be powder coated this really cool black color. Now it is flat black, but what's neat about it is it's a texturized flat black. So rather than being super, super smooth, like your, uh, like the anodized tubing is, I find that that chips really, really easily. This powder coating and that texturized powder coating isn't gonna be prone to chipping near as much or near as quickly, even whenever you bang them around. So there's no need to worry about that. Um, also, you'll see up here on the upper cage, as we move it over this way, and you can see I'm just controlling the servo cat here with my wireless hand controller. All right, I think we'll be able to see it now. Right here, we have a Kendrick Astro Systems. This is basically a, uh, it's a Digifier 7, and these are going to come standard on any servo cat powered telescope that you choose to buy from us. Um, that's if you do the servo cat installed price, and you can find the details on that on our website. So basically what this will do is we have the servo cat power board down here, and this telescope has got a powered ground board, so you don't have to worry about putting your battery inside the rocker box or anything like that. The power cord connects to the ground board, which is underneath the rocker box, and you can put your great big battery or deep cell battery right over here and never have to worry about, you know, extra weight in the mirror box, or in this case, everything's so low profile and fits so perfectly, there's no extra room for a big battery. So that makes that very handy. So we would also recommend the power ground board option. Um, for more details about that, go to our website also. But uh, so we have the power ground board, servo cats power box down there, which gives you uh, four outlets. Now up here, we have five more outlets. One of them is a constant 12 volts, and we'll typically connect that to the secondary dew heater, should you choose to get that add-on. And then we also have more dew heaters right here. Now we take the time to go ahead and label each single dew heater and where they go. So I'll tell you real quick which each of these dew heaters go to. We have your dew heater for the 80 millimeter finder. So with a large scope like this, we'd recommend a large optical finder should you choose to do that. So you want a dew heater for it so it doesn't dew up. Then we have a dew heater for the one and a quarter inch eyepiece that will go to either your finder or if you wanted to use a one and a quarter inch eyepiece in your focuser. And then also we have an extra dew heater for the two inch eyepieces that you may want to use. So all of those have dew heaters plus, you can't see it from there, but on the inside here, we equipped this particular telescope with one of Moonlight's filter slides. So you've got three filters, two inch or one and a quarter that you can put in and they're all heated as well. So in upstate New York, we have to worry about dew. I know that my friends down in the south don't really have to worry too much about that. But up here in, at Cherry Springs Star Party in Pennsylvania or at the Syracuse Astronomical Society where I like to observe a lot, dew is a constant. Um, there's very little wind, but there's lots of moisture. So having all of these dew heaters is a very, very, very good investment should you ever have to combat dew because you'll be observing long after other people have had to break down. So as you can see, that's neatly wired right here and the power to the Kendrick goes down this tube and it connects down here in the rocker box. And all of our wiring is nicely tucked away. We like to run everything and put wire clamps down so you're not gonna see a bunch of extra scraggly wires laying around. We even go so far, turn the telescope here to show you, on our rocker box, any place where we had to run wires from the outside and run them inside to uh, meet up with the servo cat power system or to run the Argo Navis wires or any wires we have to pull in here. If you look down here, we like to use nice, neat um, wire stops. So rather than just having an abrupt hole, we have a, a plastic wire stop that will run the wires through. And then also you can see we have a single clamp system, 
and you can adjust the height up and down of this positioning board. And basically, it's, uh, it's a little bit larger than what most people offer. That clamp is plenty forced to hold it in place. Um, this is large enough to use like an iPad. If you wanted to power your servo cat and Argo with iPad, you can do that. Um, and like I said before, it does have storage. So you can put some extra stuff in there, which we think is pretty cool. And so let's take you around again. And we'll show you the mirror cell here. Now as we're spinning around, you can kind of take a look at the craftsmanship. If you've ever looked at our telescopes before, you know that we like to use all pinned box joints in the construction of both the mirror boxes and the rocker boxes. And so that's a really classy looking style. And then we also, on this particular telescope, chose to use a cinnamon finish and we rubbed out the finish to give it a satin sheen. Now, whenever our customers purchase a telescope, we like to be as customizable as humanly possible. So you can choose a flat exterior, you can choose a satin exterior, or you can choose a high gloss exterior. It doesn't matter to us. We'll top coat it however you want to go at no extra cost. Just whenever you purchase your telescope and you're corresponding with us initially, just let us know what your specifications are. We're also going to start offering any of our stains free of charge. We'll do any color you want with the top coat of your choice. So look, look at our website for that as well. As you can see on the 27 inch here, we have our fan box that has a detailed routed edge to give it a nice appearance. It's painted a satin black to match the, uh, to match the bearings, the crescent bearings. And you have four boundary layer fans and they are also, we'll turn them on here, we have a potentiometer here, so you can turn these fans up and down. Now, if you like to do high power planetary observing, you'll understand how this is a huge benefit because no matter what, if you have rubber bands on fans or anything else, typically if you have them all the way on full blast, just plugged into 12 volts, it's going to abrupt your view a little bit. If you're viewing it 250 times plus, there will be a little bit of vibration. So by having this potentiometer on here and being able to turn the fans down, you don't have to worry about that vibration. So let's go to the mirror cell. On the back, you can also see the, uh, the nice stainless steel plaque that has our logo. And we let you give us details of anything you'd like it to say. If, um, this particular scope, her name is Gojira. Um, I'll let you figure out what that means. It's a 27 inch F3.9 and made in the USA. Um, almost all our parts, uh, other than two linear bearings, we get all of our parts in the USA. We take a lot of pride in that. We spend a little bit extra money to do it that way, but in the end, it's worth it because this is handcrafted in our shop. We want to represent the USA the best we can whenever the finished product is done. So let's take it down here and show you the 27-point uh, flotation mirror cell. I don't know if you're able to see in there and see how neat that is, but here you can see we have the 27-point flotation mirror cell. We use aluminum and we use steel. The steel is powder coated, flat black. The aluminum is left natural because it's underneath the mirror. And you're never going to have to worry about it. Aluminum has ex excellent thermal characteristics, which is why we choose to use it for your triangles. And then, of course, we tie all the triangles together with, uh, with pieces of Kydex. We make everything nice and neat so that whenever you show your friends your mirror cell, they can, uh, they can be in awe of the craftsmanship of the mirror cell as well as the rest of the telescope. And once again, all of our powered ground board and all of our wires are ran nice and neat in here, so there's no wires clinging around or anything like that. And so that's that. Right here you can see the still sling. I don't know if you can see it from there. But like I said, as you collimate, as you turn your knobs in and out, these still slings will adjust to compensate as long as they're held squarely at the center of gravity of the edge of the mirror, which we do that upon construction. Um, these linear bearings will be able to move up and down and keep with the plane of the mirror. What that does is that causes, uh, if that's not done and you have a relatively thin, large mirror, astigmatism will be seen at the eyepiece. It'll, it'll virtually uh, try to bend your mirror and you can see a little bit of astigmatism. You know, to a lot of people, it won't bother them at all. But, uh, you know, if, if it can be alleviated, then why not do it? So, uh, so we choose to do that. And we'll take her back up here. 
and we'll take her around for one last look. As you can see, I am a huge fan of Servo Cat. I think Gary down there is fantastic. His customer service is absolutely top notch and his system is beautiful. I feel the same about Argo Navis. Argo Navis is one of the most accurate um, digital encoders out there and we're very, very pleased with them. We'll also do Sky Commander should you want to use Sky Commander. But I wanted to pull this around front so you can see how nice and neat the rest of the telescope is tied up. Stop it right there. And you can see right here on the larger telescopes, we'll route in, and by larger I mean 20 inches plus, we like to route in the custom size. So this one is a 27 inch F3.9. Um, of course, all our telescopes will come with the mirror box cover. Um, it, should you do the Argo Navis, we'll do all the hardware for the Argo Navis. We custom machine every piece of that. And then up top, and kind of get an idea of what a 26 inch F4 is going to be like as far as a ladder would be needed. I need about three steps to get whenever I'm uh, to get to the eyepiece whenever I'm viewing at the zenith. And another great thing I should add about ServoCat, sorry I get a little distracted here, um, there is really no Dobson's hole with ServoCat. It, you know, whenever you have your Argo Navis aligned and you have your ServoCat on and you go to, everything's, you know, fully automated and go to, you get up here to Dobson's Hole, and it's really virtually non-existent because your servo cat's tracking. Um, you're viewing at the zenith, and you're not worrying about you know constantly positioning the telescope. That's another huge benefit to having servo cat and Argo Navis wired up on your telescope. But uh, here, I'll spin this around just a little more. Tell you a couple last things about the focuser. On any telescope over 20 inches, that doesn't include 20 inch, but anything over 20 inches. Instead of being your standard Moonlight Dual Speed Focuser, we actually have their large format. Sorry, I'm being attacked by a bee. This is their large format focuser. Now, what's really cool about this, Ron has come up with a system at Moonlight that you've got a set screw up here. You loosen your set screw. You can adjust your focuser at any angle from 45 degrees to 45 degrees the other way. And you got to love that whenever you're viewing on ladders or anything like that, or depending on your needs. Now, what's really cool about Ron's system is, with a laser collimator in there, I've tested this several times, it doesn't move more than maybe a tenth of a millimeter. So you can go from right here to right here, and there is barely any movement in collimation. So that's pretty rare um, with any type of rotating focuser like this. But this is Moonlight's large format focuser. Like I said, anything over 20 inches, this is a standard um, it's just standard on the telescope. Of course, you can choose from any of Moonlight's fantastic colors. Of course, we have our tail rad on here as well. We use a particular style clamping system that we do custom in our shop. And so you can rotate this tail rad at any angle, which is kind of cool. Once again, depending on your needs, you might clamp it like I do at this angle. Some people like it all the way out. I mean, if you want it on this pole back here, we can do that as well. We can do anything you ask. And uh, let's see. Of course, we have Astro System spiders, standard on our telescopes, and they have uh, thumb screws to adjust the collimation. So, you know, anytime you set up or collimate a new moon telescope, there are no tools needed. So from the time you pull it out to set it up, which takes no more than like five minutes, you can be collimated and everything without any tools. And so, I think that's about it. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me with uh, ryan at newmoontelescopes.com and visit our website sometime at www.newmoontelescopes.com. Feel free to email us any questions or give us a call if you have anything, uh, anything custom you'd like to see on one of our telescopes or if uh, you're thinking about buying one soon and you have questions about why ours would be your best choice, please contact us and we'll give you uh, the best advice we possibly can in your journey on getting the finest Dobsonian you can possibly get. So thanks so much for watching.